They rain and they snow on everyone. <laughs> and if you care, don't let them know. Don't give yourself away. <laughs> Sometimes things are so moving they're just beyond words. It's just so <laughs> incredible. <laughs> it's so powerful. Hello, welcome to this video. My name's Dan, aka Lucent. I'm a singer, songwriter, and music producer. And today, I'm going to be finally discovering Joni Mitchell. So come along with me. Let's go. <laughs> uh, yes, hello. Happy New Year, everybody. I thought I'd kick it off with one that I've been dying to do for ages and I've been like avoiding listening to Joni Mitchell so I could save it for this video despite the fact that like after listening to a couple of her songs through the Patreon requests I was like I need to listen to everything but I've been saving it. I love these discovery videos because even if you haven't heard much Joni Mitchell it means that you can jump in and discover her alongside me. So I actually posed the question on my Patreon exclusive Discord server where I said hey guys I'm doing a Joni Mitchell discovery, give me give me ideas. So thank you for your responses on there. I also spoke to my friend Alex, who is like Joni Mitchell connoisseur. And every time we met up, he's like, you need to listen to her. I'm like, I know, but I need to do YouTube. Anyway, so he's given me a few examples as well. So I've cross-referenced their suggestions and I've picked eight songs. I have already reacted to two Joni Mitchell songs in the past. River and A Case of You, which were requested on Patreon. So if you want to check out those reactions, they are actually up on the channel as well. I'll put the link. If you're somehow new to this channel and you haven't actually discovered me, then welcome to the channel. Uh, my reactions are all from the perspective of somebody who loves writing music, digging into the lyrics, the chords, production stuff, really trying to understand what the artist is trying to communicate to me. And if you think you like that kind of thing, then make sure to subscribe. I also do loads of other stuff on the channel, including things to do with my music. And actually, if you want to support me on the channel first, Further, as I've mentioned, I do actually have a Patreon. Some of the benefits you'll get include having access to the Discord server. It's called The Crying Club. There's a little community of people on there who all have really similar music tastes. But also it's a place where I can speak more directly to you and actually then get song recommendations for these kinds of videos. But you can also get early access to my videos and get them unedited. And you can also kind of commission me to react to any song or any album that you'd like. So there's loads of cool stuff on there. If you want to check out the Patreon, then you can do. The link is in the description. So on my list, I have both sides now, the old version and the new version. Big Yellow Taxi, Song for Sharon, Cactus Tree, The Beat of the Black Wings, Coyote, Help Me. Eight songs across the years. Oh, I'm so excited for this. Let's start with Big Yellow Taxi. Never listened to it properly. This is the key thing when it comes to these discoveries is that I actually get to sit down, focus, go through the lyrics and really understand the song and everything. Make sure to stick around after the song reaction to actually listen to my lyric analysis too, because I always do that too. I love the rhythm in it actually. Love it. You put up a parking lot. It's quite an interesting, like, to just have all of the percussion on one side. It's quite interesting, isn't it? That you don't know what you've got till it's gone. And put up a parking lot. That's such a good put up a park. Like, that's a really clever, like, use of syllables. Makes it such a good hook, doesn't it? You know? Oh, I just love her voice. <laughs> And put up a parking lot. I think most people assume that this song is actually a really happy song. <laughs> it's actually really cynical. She sounds really young. What year is this from, this one, actually? <laughs> so fun. Sounds like she just played that live, you know, as well. You pave paradise and put up a parking lot. It's just like extremely well written hook, isn't it? Like that it's and I think it's using the the onomatopoeia of uh, pay paradise and put up a parking lot. It's really like it's got that sense of like rhythm to it that really like gives it such a catchy hook. It's not like super poppy, but it but the hook is actually extremely catchy you know it's so it's kind of the best of both worlds in a way isn't it the youtube comments are brilliant i hang out with her all night and had no idea who she was she was the nicest celebrity i've ever met <laughs> so my friend alex was actually telling me that like apparently there was a youtuber who did a video about her and then she invited him to dinner <laughs> and i'm like oh maybe <laughs> 
can you imagine? Oh my God. I think I would die. The thing about that song that I think is interesting is that people don't really listen to it properly. They listen to the vibe. They get the vibe and think... They kind of think of it as this like, you know, boppy kind of like light, sunshiny song, which, you know, sonically it is, but like lyrically it is not right let's grab the lyrics up they paved paradise and put up a parking lot it's like kind of anti-establishment anti-capitalism message really isn't it you know it's this idea that the kind of the powers that be have taken over the paradise the natural world they paved it and they've just put a car park on it you know something that's like a symbol of you know capitalism and a symbol of like our kind of destruction of the planet as well, you know, um, environmentally. With a pink hotel, a boutique and a swinging hotspot, don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you've got till it's gone? They paved paradise and put up a parking lot. So there's a sense of regret as well there, isn't there? You know, they've, they've paved it and they've put like something that could be considered like a fun thing, but they're regretting like the loss of nature or somebody is i don't know whether the powers that be are really regretting that or not they took up the tree and put them in a tree museum and they charged the people a dollar and a half just to see him that's like in a nutshell very small amount of lyrics right exactly what the whole what like capitalism is you know it's like taking something that is natural and should be a free to everybody and selling it back to you it's like bottled water you know i'm very much on this like cynical capitalism wavelength at the moment hey farmer farmer put away that ddt now i'm assuming that's a chemical pesticide give me spots on my apple but leave me the birds and the bees please i don't want the perfect apples i want nature i want imperfection Last, late last night, I heard the screen door slam and a big yellow taxi took away my old man. I'm not sure what that's about, what the screen door is. Like, somebody's leaving. I'm guessing they're, like, partner or her father, whoever that's referring to, you know, taking him away, maybe for work. And I think maybe that's the central thing there, is that it's not just nature, but it's humans as well, whose freedoms are being taken away by this kind of uber capitalist mentality. Okay, right, let's move on to the next one. So, the next one... I'm gonna do is song for Sharon. So let's have a look. Well, this is a long one. Okay, let's go. Mm. Ooh. For the long white dress of love on a storefront. Big boy. All for something lazy. Crave that day like crazy. Craving the white dress, the wedding dress, presumably, right? Maybe it's about like women's aspirations of love. I love those back in harmonies, very cool. Because as soon as this ferry boat docks with a gambler's flocks. Wow. Mm. I love how the harmony is very like, it's not like static chord, 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 chord. It's like, it seems to flow. Like every single instrument has its own thing that's going on, you know. I wanted to see her as a kind of joke. I just love her expression and her voice. It's just, she, yeah, she like knows how to use her voice, doesn't she? I'm not sure who Sharon is, yeah. To face the dreams malfunction, a repetitious danger. Mm. At least better than I used to do. I just love how every single instrument flows, you know? Every instrument is considered almost like in a vocal way. Do you know what I mean? Like, they're all following their own melodies and patterns and stuff, but they've like merged with one another so beautifully. It seems we all live so close to that line. We all sit, live so close to that line and so far from satisfaction. Put some time into ecology. It's like that kind of like knowing that there's so much out there for you to discover but like inside of you you're still fixated on yeah like finding another lover something that's very small and right in front of you you know and the pretty lady in the white lace wedding gown home on the railroad tracks Ugh. it's just something about her voice that's so stunning and it sounds so beautiful because it's on like the microphones of analog and you know it's it's really got like a sense of that warmth to it. The ceremony of the bells and lace still veils this reckless fool here. Stairs and stairs and stairs and stairs. Yeah. Her 
like use of harmony is unlike anything else I've ever heard. Like the way it moves there, like it's so surprising and then it kind of settles into this, back into this kind of melancholy feeling. It's like, yeah, it's just stunning. You sing for your friends and your family. As she's comparing herself to another, maybe like comparing the trajectory of her life to somebody else's maybe. It feels like a perfect amount of repetition. Like she balances the repetition with the kind of almost like rambling nature of the lyrics, using repetition, which is satisfying to the human ear, but also being able to be surprising and actually tell a story that goes from one place to another. And I think in that song, she, it feels like she balances that because it has recognizable elements, like every section seems to repeat, but the story within that section develops as it goes on. So it has both the kind of satisfying sense of repetition, but this sense of progression and storytelling as well, which brings it apart and makes it feel deeper and richer than something that is just strictly re repeated. Gorgeous, in incredible stuff. I think the harmony was just like so, um, I just loved like where it went. It kind of had like a, like a central, ding, 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 whatever the key that's in which is kind of that's where the root is right and it returns to that going in circles kind of thing I think that's what she's going for and then it kind of breaks out of that it has a kind of hopeful energy where it breaks out of that and it breaks back up higher I think there's a use of like borrowed chords and that's in that place and then goes back down into that tonic again it's almost like she's resting like she's going back around in circles i love how she's used harmony there it's surprising and interesting and beautiful let's have a look at the lyrics i went to staten island to buy myself a mandolin and i saw the long white dress of love on a storefront mannequin that's a wedding dress right big boat chugging back with a belly full of cars all for something lacy some girl's gonna see that dress and crave that day like crazy. Little Indian kids on a bridge up in Canada. They can balance and they can climb like their fathers before them. They'll walk the girders of the Manhattan skyline. <laughs> wow. So there's a sense of like the kind of standard Christian way of living your life, comparing that to someone from a different culture. You know, there's like the little girl is always looking at the wedding dress as if that's like a symbol of her future and a symbol of her hopes and dreams. You know, it's all about marriage. But like comparing that to people who are completely different, like these people seem to have different priorities. You know, fleece me with the glamber's flocks. I can keep my cool at poker, but I'm a fool when love's at stake because I can't conceal emotion. So there's a certain, this, I love that idea of the poker, not being able to maintain your poker face when love's involved. And then that kind of links back to this idea of like her almost being destined for marriage because she has almost like an obsession with love. Sharon, I left my man at North Dakota Junction and I came out to the Big Apple here to face the dream's malfunction. Love's a repetitious danger. Oh, so there's that idea of repetition, the going in circles. You'd think I'd be accustomed to, well, I do accept the changes at least better than I used to. A woman I knew just drowned herself. The well was deep and muddy. She was just shaking off futility or punishing somebody. So there's a lot of observations of different people and then reflecting on herself. My friends were calling up all day yesterday, all emotions and abstractions. It seems we all live so close to that line and so far from satisfaction. So yeah, she's taking a step back and really analysing the way in which we look at our lives and what we hope for, what we dream for and what we work for and actually kind of realising that like as much as we work ourselves to the bone, we actually are just distracting ourselves. It's like the carrot, you know, you're chasing the carrot it's, but you're never actually getting there. This carrot and the stick. Dora says, has children. Mama and Betsy say, find yourself a charity. Help the needing and the crippled or put some time into ecology. There's a wide, wide world of noble causes and lovely landscapes to discover, but all I really want right now is to find another lover. And so she's, yeah, looking at like the wide world of what she could be doing. There's all these kind of big noble things that she could be doing. And instead, she's just still obsessed with love. When we were kids in Maidstone, Sharon, I went to every wedding in that little town to see the tears and the kisses and the pretty lady in the white lace wedding gown. And walking home on the railroad tracks are swinging on the playground swing. Love stimulated by illusions more than anything. So now she's looking back at her past and kind of dissecting why she might be so obsessed with love and looking back at how like her upbringing like fostered into those illusions of perfect love you know it was white lace I was chasing chasing dreams mama's nylons under my cowgirl jeans almost like not being able to let go of like what your parents teach you you know 
even though you cover it up with your cowboy jeans, you still, you're still your parents underneath. There's so many layers to this. He showed me first you get the kisses and then you get the tears, but the ceremony of bells and lace still veils this reckless fool here. So the veil veiling her, you know, oh, so good. A blank face at the window stares and stares and stares and stares and the power of reason, the flowers of deep feeling, seem to serve me, only to deceive me. Sharon, you've got a husband and a family and a farm. I've got the apple of temptation and a diamond snake around my arm. Looking at Adam and Eve and the, and the, and the apple's temptation. Maybe she's comparing her life to Sharon. Still got my eyes on the land and sky. You sing for your friends and your family. I'll walk green pastures by and by. So it's all about like looking at her own life and her obsession with love and kind of looking at like maybe Sharon's life has gone in a different direction and kind of contemplating like her life's direction. And maybe Sharon is the person that's prompted all of these thoughts because it seems like Sharon is someone she grew up with and maybe Sharon had a very different life to her you know maybe Sharon followed the more traditional path and she's thinking maybe that's something that I could have done what did I do instead you know amazing wow it's just they're so multifaceted it's like reading a book <laughs> this could be a long video I hope you're ready <laughs> we're gonna go this deep into every lyric right okay let's go to the next song um okay let's go on to so this was a suggestion from my friend alex this was this is the song coyote oh this is from the same album okay mm. i love the use of rhythm in this already oh different sets of circumstance i'm up all night in the studio oh. early on your ranch home with my real Oh. Just how close to the bone and the skin and, and still feel related. Oh. <laughs> I love the harmony, it's just so interesting. Cruised around the white lines on the freeway. Oh. 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 On the freeway. Oh. <laughs> this is. Oh. Yeah. Got chills. Do we turn into some roadhouse lights? The next thing I know. <laughs> It seems like she's kind of met somebody, maybe like on the road, and she's like, yeah, there's like a hitchhiking and stuff, right? Maybe it's just like a moment, you know? Oh, I just love that bit on the freeway, and it just, oh, it's just fucking gorgeous. Oh my god, I love it. I looked a coyote right in the face. He went running through the whisker weed. Same eyes, just like yours. And their pills and powders to get them through this passion play. The white lines on the freeway. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, it's just gorgeous, isn't it? He's staring a hole in his scrambled legs. <laughs> staring a hole in his scrambled eggs. Too far from the Bay of Funday. From Appaloosa's and eat air conditioned cubicles. Either he's gonna have. She seems to have a real interest in human nature, I think, and the way it interacts with the natural world, I think. In this prisoner of the fine white line, of the white line, oh. the free oh. She holds that off, doesn't she? Oh. She just uses, like, chord voicings that are just so unique, I think. Like, it really does feel like you know, it doesn't seem like your standard kind of guitar chord voicings at all, does it? Like, oh, gorgeous, f me. Isn't that just like so, there's something really, really difficult to put your finger on about the beauty of these songs that like, oh, it's just phenomenal, isn't it? Like, there's just something about like the way that that one flows and the warmness and the richness in it and like how she seems to be digging into like the middle of your psyche. She's like digging into your emotion too and she just follows it and it just, the songs just like flow so stunningly beautifully, even though you, they use quite interesting, like, like the banana, like that bass bit, that bass line, it sounds like it shouldn't fit, but doesn't it just like go so beautifully well, especially when it like goes into that, into that really beautiful, like chord voicing, that, that, that section, it's just gorgeous. It just flows, doesn't it? It feels like you're driving down the road, like you're on the freeway, like following the freeway. It's just, oh my god. Yeah. 
it's moving is really oh my god i love it it's just so gorgeous i love it <laughs> let's look at the lyrics um just i don't know there's just something really like indescribable that just is like it's just I, it's really difficult for me to explain maybe i can never explain it maybe this is one of those things where you only get it when you listen you know okay so no regrets coyote we just come from such different sets of circumstance i'm up all night in the studios and you're up early on your ranch you'll be brushing out a, a brood mare's tail while the sun is ascending and i'll be getting home with my reel to reel there's no comprehending just how close to the bone and the skin and the eyes and the lips you can get and still feel so alone and still feel related like stations in some relay you're not a hit and run driver no no racing away you just picked up a hitcher a prisoner of the white lines on the freeway <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is, but something there is just, there's so much like, so presumably she's the hitcher, right? She's like maybe traveling or maybe this is the one that Alex, I remember my friend Alex was telling me about an album that was of hers that was all about traveling and that she was on a road trip. So I'm guessing that's what this one is like. There's this like sense of like her like being maybe picked up by somebody who's from a completely different walk of life and just like looking at like how you can be like so similar and yet your lives be so different, you know? You know, like this guy's up every morning like brushing the tail of his horse and like looking after his animals and stuff on the ranch and she the same time is recording her songs on her reel to reel, you know, she's just like having really late nights, she's only just getting home. It's like very opposite. So just how close to the bone and the skin and the eyes, like we're human, we're exactly the same and you still feel so alone, but you still feel related. It's... <sighs> And that thing, you just picked up a, a hitcher, a prisoner of the white lines on the freeway. As if this idea that she's trapped on the road. She's a prisoner to those white lines on the freeway. Like she's destined to constantly wander and never find a destination. It's just so incredible. It's so powerful. Yeah. God, I felt this way when I read the lyrics to some of the other ones because it's like, it's like you're just lost in the song and then when you actually look at the lyrics, it's there's just something so powerful about it. It's just insane. Okay. We saw a farmhouse burning down in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night and we rolled right past that tragedy. So it's like another life, something else that's happening in somebody else's life, happening at exactly the same time. And yet somehow this huge tragedy is like just something that they wander past. You know, how can something that's so big and would is ruined someone else's life be just something that you ride by when you're driving by? Till we turned down some road house lights where a local band was playing, locals were kicking up and shaking on the floor. And the next thing I know that coyote is at my door. He pins me in a corner and he won't take no. He drags me out to the dance floor and we're dancing close and slow. Now he's got a woman at home. He's got another woman down the hall. He seems to want me anyway. Why do you have to get so drunk and lead me on that way? You just picked up a hitch out prisoner of the white lines on the freeway. That line, it's just every time I read it, it's just so, oh my God. Um, yeah, so she's revealing this character, you know, this person that she hits to ride with is actually an adulterer person and it's that idea that it's an it's another layer of this thing where she's like somebody else has a completely different life that relates to this in a completely different way how can I be in this situation and somebody's life be existing at the same time it's like almost unfathomable to kind of be outside of your own situation and yet as important as it is to you somebody else has something running parallel to you that is just as important to them. It is unfathomable to really take in how many people are, are having their own experiences like yours at the same time as you are, you know, like in, paramount, in parallel, at like the parallel, like the lines on the road. Oh my God, maybe that's what the lines on the road are supposed to represent, like this idea of parallel lines, parallel roads, all you're all traveling your own road. And she's a prisoner to her own, her own. She's trapped within her own experience of the world, you know? 
and she's trying to relate to other people's and yet she's still put back to her road, you know. Wow. Oh my God. I looked Coyote right in the face on the road to Bell Jenny near my hometown. He went running through the whisker wheat, chasing some prize down and a hawk was playing with him. Maybe this is an actual coyote? He had those same eyes, just like yours, under the dark glasses, privately probing the public rooms and peeking through keyholes in numbered doors where the players lick their wounds and take their temporary lovers and their pills and their powders to get them through this passion play. No regrets, coyote. I just get off up a ways. You just picked up a hitcher, prisoner of the white lines on the freeway. So now she's comparing his behaviour to an actual coyote. Coyote's in the coffee shop. He's staring a hole in his scrambled eggs. He picks up my scent on his fingers while he's watching the waitress's legs. Oh my God, so this guy is like completely lost between trying, like almost following all the different women. And he remembers like the night that he had with Joni the night before. But yet he's still looking at the next person. It's like... Staring a hole in his scrambled eggs, he's looking down, he's just maybe at the pits of hangover and depression, and yet he's still looking for the next fix. He's like maybe a sex addict. Either he's going to have to stand a fight or take off out of here. I tried to run away myself, to run away and wrestle with my ego, with this, this flame you put here in this Eskimo, in this hitcher, in this prisoner of the fine white lines, of the white lines on the free freeway. So it's almost like she's been changed by this man in a way. Like she's comparing it how he's trapped within his, trapped by his demons and how maybe she will continue to be trapped by hers. It's just insane. It's just phenomenal. <sighs> my God, I don't know what to do with myself. Um, okay. My God, this is gonna be a very long video. <laughs> what, we've done three songs? <laughs> Let's go on to the next one. This was another one from the Discord. This is Cactus Tree. You can hear that this is remastered, can't you? It's a bit more of a pristine nature to it. Oh. Her melodies are just so phenomenal, like they're so beautiful. It's like being shown beauty by a beautiful man, you know? Maybe it's this idea of like traveling and trying to find love and being split maybe between travel and life and adventure and falling in love. There's a lady in the city and she thinks she loves them all. There's a war she fears that one will ask her for eternity. She fears that he will ask her for eternity and she's so busy being free. Just around the man She's thinking, you know, there could be a million other people I could meet. Like, why would I limit myself to one? Her heart is full and hollow like a cactus tree. I wish I could write something this beautiful. Maybe one day. God, what? The bit. <laughs> it's so difficult to explain. <laughs> and like, all these videos are like, you know, I sit there trying to explain how I'm feeling and like, sometimes it's just, you can't, can you? <laughs> sometimes things are so moving they're just beyond words. 
Wow. <coughs> Bloody hell. Um, there's just, yeah, an indescribable beauty to her songwriting that is just... She just captures something otherworldly. Yeah, I find it very hard to know what to say about it. I love it. <laughs> I feel so moved. That one just felt so romantic. I think that was really like the sense of that what I was getting and being split between, you know, do I make that decision? And there's all this idea of like, you know, yeah, let's let's look into it. <laughs> there's a man who's full out who's been out sailing in a decade full of dreams. And he takes her to a schooner. I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> and he treats her like a queen, bearing beads from California with their amber stones and green. He calls her from the harbour. He has kissed her with his freedom. He has heard her off to starboard in the breaking and the breathing of the water weeds while she was busy being free. There's a man who's climbed a mountain and he's calling out her name and he hopes her heart can hear 3,000 miles. He calls her again. He can think her there beside him. He can miss her just the same. He has missed her in the forest while she showed her, while he showed her all the flowers and the branches sang the chorus as he climbed the scaly towers of a forest tree while she was somewhere being free. So it's like, it's almost like he's met this woman. He's been out sailing. He's been out traveling for the decade. <laughs> and returns and finds this and here's this woman who is maybe inspired by his um traveling and all the stories and everything maybe she then goes off to be free and does her own thing and does her own traveling and he's in love with her and he's missing her he hopes her heart can hear 3000 miles there's a man who sent a letter and he's waiting for reply he has asked of, of her travel since the day they said goodbye. He writes, wish you were beside me. We can make it if we try. He has seen her at the office with her name on all his papers. Through the sharing of the profits, he will find it hard to shake her from his memory. And she's so busy being free. So he's really fallen hard and wants to marry her. And he's still waiting on her reply while she's off busy being free doing her thing there's a lady in the city and she thinks she loves them all the one who's thinking of her the one that sometimes calls the one who writes her letters that's him with the facts and figures scroll she has brought them to her sense she's to her senses they have laughed inside her laughter now she rallies her defenses she fears that one will ask her for eternity and she's so busy being free so she doesn't want to be tied down and she she's thinks that she's fallen in love with all these different people including the man the sailor but she's now scared that one of them is going to ask her to marry him and tie her down as a man who sends her medals he is bleeding from the war as a jouster and a jester and a man who owns a store there's a drummer and a dreamer and you know there may be more she will love them when she sees them they will lose her if they follow she only means to please them and her heart is full and hollow like a cactus tree while she's so busy being free wow so there's a real, like, dissection of this woman who is, like, almost running around falling in love with men, but actually her version of love is not the same as their version of love. They want to get married. They want to settle down. They think that she's the one where she's in love with all of them. She spreads her love thinly. And I think Joni seems to suggest that she thinks she loves them all. Her heart is full, you know, because she's sharing it, but actually it's hollow because she hasn't committed, you know, her love to one person like a cactus tree, being full on horror like a cactus tree. I suppose like there's this sense of density to a cactus tree, but actually they're hollow, like they're hollow inside, right? Because of something to do with the, the living in the desert. I don't know. Um, <laughs> there's also a solitary nature to a cactus, right? Like stood alone in the middle of the de desert. And that's who she is. She's a solitary. She's free. I, d I don't, like, I don't know what to do with myself. This is just insane. Let's have a look at the next song. What have I got next? Cool, let's go on to the next one. So this is another one suggested by my friend Alex. This is The Beat of the Black Wings. Okay. Ooh, okay. Interesting vibe, different. Much more kind of, is this 80s maybe? Yeah, 88. It's got like much more of an 80s synth vibe, hasn't it? Everything else has been a bit more folky. Cool. Oh yeah.
I love the use of the scents here. It sounds 80s, but she's using it in an interesting way, much more than like the kind of cheesy pop side of the 80s music, you know. <sighs> a mission for the power and the glory. There's a war zone inside me. There's something to do with, like, like there's references to war, isn't there? I think, like, about finding glory, and she talks about a war zone in her own mind, you know. Wow. This is definitely a different vibe. It's quite interesting to hear something of hers that is very different. Like you can obviously still sense, you know, her use of harmony, her use of rhythm, but instrumentally and uh, melodically, it's quite different, isn't it? A lot of this song is a bit more of a mood, isn't it? Like. Oh, that's the name of the album, isn't it? Yeah. Interesting. That's a very different vibe. I quite like that I've got a bit of a variety with, with the songs that have been, been, been chosen for me. Yeah, it's in interesting to hear what she did in the 80s because obviously like there was a lot of new technology with synthesizers becoming much more readily accessible like music changed so much in the 80s and it's interesting to hear her experimenting with them in her own way yeah it's a very different vibe let's have a look at the lyrics i met a young oh okay <laughs> there you go i met a young soldier his name was killer kyle god he was shaken all over like a night frightened child okay so there's a certain amount of like PTSD potentially maybe this is like after Vietnam wait when did Vietnam that was the end of the 70s really wasn't it so it's a bit after that really but it's post Vietnam which I think the the culture of you know understanding what war was and actually you know the reality of war I think changed everybody's perceptions of war I think like the, the Vietnam war in particular was was a big point of change in terms of like public perception of war i think there was much more of an idea of glory before that and now it's you know seen as horrific this is his story it's a tough one for me to sing hard as the squawk and the flap and the beat and the beat of the black wings charlie angel charlie angel maybe that's where charlie's angels came from <laughs> they gave me a gun he said they gave me a mission for the power and the glory propaganda piss on them <gasps> There's a war zone inside me. I can feel things exploding. I can't even hear the fucking music playing for the beat of the beat of the black wings. <gasps> so the black wings, maybe, oh, maybe it's like the helicopter. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it's got to be right. So it's about PTSD. He's like, he's like, I can't even hear the beat of the music because I can still hear the beat of the helicopter. Oh my God, fucking hell. He said, I never had nothing, nothing I could believe in. My girl killed our unborn child without even grieving. Okay, so that's to do with abortion. Wow. I put my hands on her belly to feel the kid kicking. Damn, she'd been to some clinic. Oh, the beat of the black wings. So maybe she got pregnant before he went and had an abortion because she was maybe worried about him not coming back. And then he comes back and the baby's gone. Wow. <gasps> they want you, they need you. They train you to kill, to be a pin on some map, some vicarious thrill. The old hate the young. That's the whole heartless thing. The old pick the wars, we die in them. To the beat, the beat of the black wings. Oh my God. There's a man drawing pictures on the sidewalk with chalk. Just as fast as he draws them, rain come down and washes them off. Keep the drinks coming, girl, till I can't feel anything. I'm just a chalk mark in a rainstorm. I'm just the beat of the black wings. Wow. This man feels completely replaceable. Like he's just a bit of chalk. Like someone's just writing a figure on the on the, on the pavement, and he could just be washed away without any ceremony. He could just be. He's disposable. And post-war, he is completely fucked by this beat of the black wings that keeps 
this PTSD that stays in his head and ruins everything for him. I'm not sure Charlie Angel, I'm not sure what that's referring to. Maybe that's like the name of like a helicopter star, I don't know, something like that, you know. That is just so powerful. Wow, what a story to tell and what a way to say it. It's very like, you can tell when she says like, this is a tough one to me to sing because it's like really very raw and very real and very dark. Incredible, incredible. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna pick is Help Me. Back to the guitar. Oh, gorgeous. Oh, oh. Oh my God. Mm. Ah. Ah, gorgeous. <laughs> nice. Every song goes to a place that I don't quite expect, you know? Help me. It's oh, gorgeous. Yeah, I think I'm falling in love too fast. Yes. This one's a like, slightly more simple song, but the, just the way in which it flows is so gorgeous. Ah, mm. oh, oh, so nice. This has a few kind of more hallmarks of like the kind of 70s sound, doesn't it? Like the backing harmonies and stuff. It's just, I love that bit, just how it fly, it just jumps out, doesn't it? It flies out, it's beautiful. She's just so gifted, isn't she? I love how, like, actually, how there's a simplicity to her music, but also this incredible, incredible depth. I don't know how she manages to make things be so simultaneously simple and easy to understand, but have, like, just the most phenomenal depth and the most phenomenally interesting use of harmony and melody. Uh, do you know what I mean? It's like, how does somebody do that? It's just insane. That one is so, feels like so traditionally romantic kind of thing. Help me, I'm falling. I think I've fallen in love again. Yeah. Let's have a look at the lyrics. Help me, I think I'm falling in love again when I get that crazy feeling I know I'm in trouble again. I'm in trouble because you're a rambler and a gambler. I'm falling in love with the wrong man, yeah. And a sweet-talking ladies' man. And you love your loving, not like you love your freedom. Okay, so the freedom is the, is, is the guy actually is a ladies' man. He's very non-committal. He prefers his freedom more than he loves being in love. Unlike Joni, who loves being in love. <laughs> clearly. And she's fallen in love too fast with, with somebody who's the wrong guy and she knows it, but she still can't help it. There's this feeling of like helplessness. Help me. Um, because she's almost like can't control her own heart, which I think is like so real, isn't it? Like it's got me hoping for the future and worrying about the past. Cause I've seen some hot, hot blazes come down to smoke and ash. We love our loving, but not like we love our freedom. Oh, didn't it feel good? We were sitting here talking or lying there not talking. Didn't it feel good? Go dance with the lady in the hole in her stocking. Didn't it feel good? Didn't it feel good? Lady with a hole in her stocking. Yeah. Uh, almost like accepting that he's going to go off and like dance with the lady in the hole in her stocking. You know what I mean? Help me, I think I'm falling in love with you. Are you going to let me go there by myself? It's such a lonely thing to do. Both of us flirted around, flirting and flirting, hurting too. We love our loving, but not like we love our freedom. Yeah. So there's so much depth in that, even though on the surface it seems like a kind of, help me, I'm falling in love with you. Like that's kind of a simple, like a simple hallmark, isn't it? And But then the actual lyrics and the actual story of it, the complexities to the lyrics really reveals like a very three-dimensional story of two people falling in love, one of which is kind of just going along with what the, uh, like she's just going along with what the guy's doing because she loves him, even though she's not actually happy with him sleeping around and going with other people. Yeah, and she's then actually realizing actually shit, I think I'm falling in love by myself. He's not falling in love with me. He's just using me, yeah. Cool, okay, so the final two songs are the same song. 
<laughs> so, bef so before we go into the final songs, if you've liked this reaction, then please make sure to give it a like and make sure to give me a comment as well. All these things help with the algorithm and getting my video out there to more people. Um, and if you haven't already subscribed, then make sure to do so. And if you're a regular viewer of the channel and you want to support me even further, um, then you can do over on Patreon with a variety of benefits and a thriving community of people who all love music. So yeah, cool. Okay, so what we're going to do, this was one of my patrons, Sarah, suggested this. She was like, okay, so you will have heard from both sides now in Love Actually. I have. But obviously, like, it's in the film. I have never sat down and listened to it properly. But she said that, like, the original and the revisit in 2000 is very different. So I'm going to listen to both and compare them, which was all her idea. <laughs> so thank you, Sarah, for that suggestion. She's a babe, love her. Um, <laughs> so let's go. Let's have a look. OK, so from both sides now. So the original studio version from 1969. <laughs> This is different from the Love Actually one. <laughs> oh, gorgeous. Wow. Oh, that guitar is so full and rich. Clouds from both sides, okay. Cloud illusions, I recall, don't know clouds at all. <laughs> it's like this idea of this big mystical thing in the sky, and you see it all the time, and yet it's still so unfathomably deep, you know? Dizzy dancing where you feel. I've looked at love that we now it's just a It's like trying to protect yourself, you know? Yeah, and I just looked at love from both sides. Even though she's been on both sides of it. <laughs> she's been in the heartbreak. She's been falling in love. She's always falling in love with the hurt, you know, all sides of it. She still doesn't really understand it. <laughs> Yeah. They say I've changed It's lost But something's gained wow. I've looked at life from both sides I've looked at life from both sides now Wow I really don't know life <laughs> This is so gorgeous It's like she's, yeah <laughs> Still, the there's an illusion of what life should be, and, and she still is blindsided by it. Wow. That, gorgeous, that guitar is so gorgeous. That was stunning. God, she just knows. There's just something so human about the stories that she tells. It's like it's like she understands or doesn't understand what it is to be human. You know, that's the most kind of ultimately thing that gets right into you, you know, is that she doesn't know when none of us know, like she's not standing there and giving you the answer. She's standing with you and helping you contemplate those things for yourself and admitting that, like, she doesn't know everything. And that starts at the metaphor of the clouds, you know, like looking at the clouds from all different angles and but not really ever being able to see them in their fullness. There's this idea that like clouds, that when you see them from one angle, they look like a pigeon. And when you see them from one angle, they look like a, a cat. You know, there's this idea of like, everybody sees it differently. Everybody sees clouds differently, but none of us actually see them fully. Then when she then compares that metaphor to love and to life, it works on so many levels, doesn't it? Because who of us really does actually understand love? We all go around saying that we have this idea of what we love, what we want from love. We know, we think we can control it. We think we can decide what we're going to do. We think we can kind of put all these restrictions on it. But at the end of the day, you love someone or you don't. And you kind of say, oh, this is my type. This is, you know, this is the kind of thing I'm looking for. And then you just fall in love with someone who just comes along. You know, it's like, you can't control it. You can't understand it. You can't wrangle it. Then that metaphor then compares to life in general. And actually there's a real piece 
from being able to say that you've looked at life from both sides, you know, the ups and downs, but accepting that you can't understand and just saying, I'm just gonna try and exist and live in the moment and just take things as they are. I'm guessing the lyrics are the same in the both versions. Bows and flows of angel hair and ice cream castles in the air and feather canyons everywhere, I've looked at clouds that way. So there's a real kind of idea of fantasy, looking into the clouds and seeing fantasy and see like dreaming of something fantastical and wonderful. But now they only block the sun, they rain and snow on everyone. So many things I would have done, but clouds got in my way. So it's the different sides of how you could look at the clouds with optimism and hope and fantasy and excitement or by the fact that they block out the sun, they block out the optimism, they block out your hope, and actually they just get in the way. And now I've looked at clouds from both sides now, from up and down and still somehow it's cloud illusions I recall. I don't really know clouds at all. She thinks that she's understood these clouds, but like actually at the end of the day, it's only the illusion of what they are. That's all that she can remember. And actually it occurs to her that it all is all just an illusion. It's all just her perception. And actually she doesn't know them at all. And now this then develops onto the way in which she then looks at love and life. So moons and dunes and ferris wheels, the dizzying dancing way that you feel as every fairy tale comes real. I've looked at love that way. But now it's just another show. You leave them laughing when you go. And if you care, don't let them know. Don't give yourself away. <laughs> it's like the idea that like, you can be so in love that it's so, it's like a beautiful Ferris wheel and a, and a beautiful show. And it's, you're dancing around and you feel dizzy with deliriously in love. <laughs> but actually on the other side, it's just a facade. It's just a show. When you're left and you're left alone, it can leave you in a place where you have to like hide your true feelings from someone because you're scared of being hurt. Well, I've looked at love from both sides now, from give and take and still somehow it's love's illusions I recall. I really don't know love at all. Tears and fears and feeling proud to say I love you right out loud. <laughs> Dreams and schemes and circus crowds, I've looked at life that way. But now all friends are acting strange, they shake their heads, they say I've changed. Well, something's lost and something's gained in living every day. <sighs> I've looked at life from both sides now, from win and lose, and still somehow it's life's illusions I recall. I really don't know life at all. <laughs> It's like so mind blowing the way that she manages to put in like eight lines, like something that's just so like the core of being a human being, you know, looking at life in the way that of the, the brilliant things to say, I love you to somebody, you know, the feeling proud of what and your dreams and the, and the way that you've like lived your life and the excitement of life. But then also the side that it's, you know, things that you think have changed you and made you better but actually there's another there's always another kind of way to look at it and old friends are saying that I'm acting strange or they're acting strange and they because they think that I have changed that I, and she manages to come to a place where she can say actually something's there's always something's going to be lost and always something's going to be gained just by living every day and there's a sense of like being settled in that in knowing that whatever you do in life, there's always different, there's always a like a yin and a yang, there's always an up and a down, there's always a different perception, there's always two sides to everything, and you can't control which of those people perceive or which of those you perceive. And there's a real sense of feeling settled in that feeling there, because something's lost and something's gained in living every day. Because at the end of the day, it's all about the illusion which is our perception. And that's all that we can recall. That's all that we can comprehend. That's just insane. I can't believe I've never sat down and listened to this song properly and looked at the lyrics and everything. It's just life-changing. <laughs> oh my God. 
I knew that this discovery was going to be a big one for me. I thought musically I would be inspired, lyrically I would be inspired. I didn't know as a human I would be like moved to such a level. Okay, so let's go on to the last one. This is both sides now, but the new version. Or the two, from 2000. Oh wow. This is very different already, instrumentally. And there's a real poetry thinking that 30 years later, she's looking at life from a different side. Oh, her voice, so different. Wow, it's so much deeper. And ice cream castles in the air, canyons everywhere. Wow. But now they only block the sun. They rain and they snow on everyone. <laughs> So beautiful to hear it orchestrated. I really don't know clouds at all. Moons and peace. Oh. The way that you feel. I've looked at love that way. And when you go, don't give yourself away. God. Still. Her voice sounds so much more mature, doesn't it? But it really, there's something so poignant about the maturity in her voice. Because this song is all about what you learn throughout your life. And she comes back to it even with maturity and she still doesn't know life at all, you know? Feeling proud to say I love you. Strange. Well, something's lost, but something's gained. Yeah. There's so much hope in that, isn't there? Every day you know. I, <laughs> I really don't. Oh, gorgeous instrumentation in this one. Really adds a kind of grandiose feeling to it, doesn't it? And I think that really lends itself to the maturity in her voice, too, you know. I really don't know life. I really don't know life at all. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah there's something really like so poignant in her revisiting that song so many years later she's now seen life from both sides from young and from old you know and still she doesn't know life at all it's just i've never known like something like that to like you know for someone to revisit a song and for it to such, have like such specific poignancy in the way that they've revisited it and you know the the point of revisiting it being that poignancy it's just perfection in art isn't it you know and like the way in which it just describes life and the way in which we never will or really understand life or love or even the clouds <laughs> you know and, and to do that from both sides of her life I'd never known anything to be more poignant and poetic you know and I love that in returning to it she's almost made created a sound that's more mature as well you know there's this idea of being like one person with a guitar is almost like how you start you know it's like a young songwriter and then when you when you mature you discover more instruments you discover more ways to make things it's like before her being big and famous and being able to get a massive orchestra and after so there's all these different layers to the performance and the creation of this song that is all about life and the way that it has changed for her and the way that things change and there are ups and downs 
but at the end of the day, you can never really understand life. The lesson to be taken from it is that even, you know, as as an older person, and presumably she's in her 60s, like, you'll never really understand life. There's a profound feeling of understanding that there's this, like, feeling of being settled because you know, you can let go of ever being able to understand fully what life and love has to offer. And it's almost like someone going through those feelings and realising that they can't control it and then feeling it like toward like later in their life, agreeing and saying, you know what, actually, it's true. I never can control it and I'm happy with that. That's fine. I've let go. I'm free of feeling the need to control life and feeling the need to fully understand everything. Yeah. I just like, this is like the most astounding discovery I've made through doing this YouTube stuff. Like, you know, you guys suggest music to me all the time. And, you know, obviously a lot of people have suggested Joni to Mitchell to me over the years, but I kind of like, was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't understand really quite the level at which I would be moved. And I feel like I've been changed, you know. It's the kind of music that changes your outlook on life. It's more than just music. It's more than just harmony and melody and the things that you can dissect and describe music by. It's a sum of all those parts. Ultimately becomes a thing that is the most human expression. And from one human to another, to millions, can change the way that you see the world. And that's throughout every song, throughout every single kind of place that we went with her. There's different perceptions of that. And I honestly cannot wait to just listen to everything. <laughs> but what I'll do is after this, I'll do a vote on the channel and I'll get you guys to vote which one I should do next. Anyway, cool. Thank you so much for joining me for this momentous video, this momentous moment in my life. I hope you enjoyed it. Please share all your memories of Joni Mitchell in the comments. I'd love to hear the way in which... You know, when did you first hear her? When were you first, like, moved by her? Like, how did she change your life? I want to know all of that, you know. Okay, before we sign off, a massive shout out to my patrons, um, especially those who are active on the Discord server, um, and especially Sarah for making me listen to both sides now. Both sides of both sides now, because that was such a good idea. Um, all their names are coming up on screen now. Um, if you want to join the Crying Club, get on the Discord, get your videos early, and request reactions from me, then consider heading over to Patreon. The link is on the screen um, and in the description and everything. Cool. <sighs> Thank you so much. I honestly cannot wait to do more Joni Mitchell. I will see you again soon. Bye.